Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Porsche from From the Inside Out. Per usual, coming to you with a live guest. Today we have Timothy coming from Arizona. I'm going to let him go ahead and introduce himself so you guys get a better feel from where he's coming from. Go ahead, Tim Ty. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to greet the people, you know what I mean, with open heart, with love. You know, I'm Timothy Lahim on, fresh out of prison. You know what I'm saying? Got out August 20th, 2019, from serving 29 years and three months. And now I'm here with Portia to speak the truth and not lift the people by any means necessary. Okay, amen. So I don't know, you know, y'all caught that. But what Timothy said is that um, he just was released August 20th from serving 29 years and that he's here to speak the truth, put it all down for the people, and um, serve y'all with some information. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to Go from point A to point B and then get to point Z, which is the most important part. Me and him know what the most important part is, but we're going to try to feed that to y'all. So um, we want to rewind, you know, what caused your incarceration? Uh, I was a shit to go on Keep it, keep, keep, keep it back. Okay. okay. I said I was, I was a shit to go on I robbed the people. I infringed on people's constitutional rights. And everything I did, you know what I'm saying, I done. I'm guilty for what I did. I'm not innocent. I don't want no sympathy for what I did. I done what I did. And I accepted the consequences for what I did. Okay. No, we don't really get that too often. Not a lot of people are willing to, you know, say that, you know, I, I did. I fucked up. In short, you know, I did something wrong and I accept the consequences for what I've done and, um, and, you know, that I'm willing to move forward. So, in short, at the age of how old were you when you were um, convicted? I was 15 years old, nine months. 15 years old? Yeah, 15 and nine months. And did they send you to, like, the juvenile first? Well, I went to juvenile and I was transferred as, as an adult. When I turned 17, they gave me 36 years. Oh, Lord. Every time he said that number, the mind is not the first time he said that, but every time he said that, it just hit me a certain kind of way. So with 36 years at the age of 17, um, how did you accept that? How, how was that digested to a 17-year-old person that's not even lived, you know, barely, you've lived barely half of, 30 years, how how did that go? Well, I didn't digest it. It was to the point to where I didn't even see myself living past 30. So my whole mentality and mind state was I was going to die in prison. So I moved as such. I act accordingly. And uh, it, that's all I can say about that. I didn't, I didn't see what was happening was happening now only god knew what was going to happen and god got us at this point right now and i'm thankful for god for getting me to this point to be talking to you portion amen that's what i'm talking about so fast forwarding a little bit you know like you went through um the odd number of years that you were incarcerated through your incarceration period was there like a day that came about that that flipped things for you you know what kind of leveled you out while you were serving your sentence? Well, it took me uh, 20 years because my whole mind state was being a gang lit. I was dedicated. You know what I mean? No different than the Taliban. I'm, I wanted this so bad, I took 36 years. They offered me seven years to tell, but I took 36 years and I honored the code and, and this code doesn't exist. Like I always said, a lot of individuals, the streets ain't nothing but a big booty woman with an ugly face and when you get in prison, you see the face and you don't want the big booty no more. So, <laughs> I've never heard that <laughs> Hey, but, but like I say, you know, uh, it took a long time to level me out. You know, I did uh, 25 years in solitary, which is 9,125 days. So sitting off in solitary, Ooh. not getting any letters, not getting any visits, not getting any money receipts from the so-called homies or the so-called friends or the so-called individuals I did the time for, it opened my eyes to the truth. And like I tell people, time is the biggest snitch and it'll tell on everybody. And it testified on them, and I know the truth now. Okay. So with that being said, um, realizing that you were in solitary confinement, that your 
friends or you know who you were expecting to be of supporting you that they were not there did that cause like uh you know anger did that cause for like for you you know to want kind of you know to retaliate against the whoever you was affiliated with of course in the school it has screwed me to a point of, you know, I feel like to want to commit suicide. I know what it feels like to want to give up. You know, it destroyed me because I believed in it with my life. I believed in it like it was a religion. I was willing to sacrifice, destroy, massacre anybody who came in the way of what I believed in. And to find out what I believed in was a facade, it destroyed me. It destroyed me. To the point where I wanted to commit suicide because I was willing to give up. But God allowed that to happen. And by not allowing that to happen, he gave me knowledge of self. And giving me knowledge of self, I woke up. And when I woke up, I realized that I was dealing with the devil. And when you deal with the devil, you have to expect what the devil will come with. The devil was sent here to reign on earth. And he utilized us to destroy each other. And in mm. doing that, I just had to grow. And then when I became a better man and becoming a better man, I became a better person and becoming a better person. I understand and I realize and I recognize that God is the only foundation that I need to stand on. Amen. And that's what I'm on right now. Okay. Okay. Round of applause. I like that breakdown. You know, that was all good stuff. So at that point, then I'm going to say you realize that or you found God. Correct. So so at that point, you found God. You gained your relationship with God. Of course. That's right. Okay. So after you gained your relationship with God, would you say that you're... How long after that were... How long after, How long did you stay in prison after that? Should I say? I would say 10 years, 10 years, 3 months. And how was how was so how was that ten years versus the the twenty years prior? Or, well, it was it was still uh, rough for me due to the fact one thing about the correction system they don't care about your change they only go off of what the computer say if the computer say that you were this or you that that's what you are so they're gonna treat you accordingly and that's how they treated me but nevertheless I had to continue I had to stand fast to what I believed in even standing in solitary confinement I came home August 20th out of solitary confinement due to the fact they said I had too much influence and when a person have influence and he's not working for them then they feel like he can use that influence to go against them right. therefore you are threat to their establishment and they will lock you down accordingly so I'm not mad about it because like I said oh, I so you were under like the administration Administrative solitary confinement. I was in administrative solitary confinement based on having too much influence. I wasn't in there based on a disciplinary. I was in there based on having too much influence, and they felt that my influence can uh, offset the institution. It's funny how they try to use that, but I mean, when a person has been in an institution, in incarcerated in general for 30 something odd years of course that person is going to know you're going to know the system kind of ins and out that's what you've been surrounded by so it's funny how they try to use that to lock you up well i'm not going to say they used it against me they was correct that was correct i did have an influence i could have offset the institution and once upon a time i was negative i was moving with the devil i played a part in the extortion rackets I did everything they said I was doing. I just never got caught in doing it. But am I guilty of it? Yeah, I'm guilty of it. I've done it. I was surviving. I went in there as a child and had to become a man. And it was so it it it, it, it you can survive with a fitness. You either be strong or you be weak. And right. at the same time, in Arizona, you have the Mexicans against the, the African Americans. You have the Caucasians against the African Americans. You have the Native Americans against the African Americans, and you have you know what I'm saying the Pisces, which come from Mexico, against the African Americans. You got every nationality against the African Americans. So if they're in a situation, you have a hundred African Americans against seven hundred other people. So of course we're gonna stand fast accordingly. We're gonna do exactly what we're supposed to do. But the catch twenty two of it is you got the Crips and the Bloods and the gang. 
gangsters, they all against each other. We mm. can't get along to the in the world. Even in the eyes of annihilation, we can't get along because we too busy, you know what I'm saying, trying to be mustard and we ain't trying to be ketchup. Okay. So, with that being said, clearly you was dealing with a whole bunch of conflict on the yard because as you just stated, with all the races already against black and brown people. No, 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 no. The brown people out here is against black people too. Yeah, that's what I was about to get to. You saying all the races was against black people, and then also that the black people was against the black people too. No, here the brown and the white is together. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But every race out here is together against the blacks. Ah, ah, okay. So y'all basically just by yourself. Well, it's always by us. It's separate, but I get what you're saying, and then. Clearly, then we also is being ignorant and clapping at each other too. Of course, we, we separated within West Side, South Side, and then that's how we separated out here. You got the West Side over here, the South Side over here. We don't get along. So if anything happened, we basically gonna get annihilated. But sometimes we come together to stand fast against them. going against other people, and it's it's usually based on ignorance anyway. Because we should be standing fast against administration and on what we need to get for the rehabilitation system. Correct. But you know, rehabilitation only means to go back to your old self. And if we go back to our old self, I'll be out here with a pistol in my pocket. So I can say they didn't rehabilitate me. God rehabilitated me. Therefore, I'm out here without a pistol in my pocket. And my mind is my pistol. Okay. So let's bring it to August 20th. No, actually, so you you were released, you were sentenced to 36 years, and you were released 10, 6, 6, 7 years early? No, I, I, they gave me 36 hard, which means you have to do two-thirds of the sentence. Okay. I had to do two-thirds of 36, which means I had to do 24 years, but because I had parole, I was denied parole twice, and I was caught with an illegal cell phone, and they gave me 1.5 years for the cell phone, so that's what I'm out right now on. I'm out on a cell phone charge. Okay, okay. So, now we can fast forward to August 20th. Um, after, you know, serving that extensive amount of time, you know, when that day finally came, what was the feelings like? It was, uh, I can't say that I was excited or overly happy. I, you know, like I said, I prayed to God that my mother didn't pass before I was released because my father passed. So I was blessed to be able to be out here with my mother. That's my excitement. Okay. You know, uh, I, I was incarcerated longer than I was alive as society. So what I know is how to do time. Yes. I don't know how to be free. I'm learning how to be free now. And the only reason why I'm learning how to be free is because I made a promise to God that I will honor what I told him I will honor. And I fear if I don't honor what I said I was going to honor, I will be punished accordingly. And I don't want to feel the wrath of God, but feeling the wrath of man is nothing. So I got to honor God. I don't got to honor man. Okay. That is just, you know, extremely deep. And I'm uh, sorry to hear about your father. How how far into your sentence did your father pass? Well, my father passed four years after I was locked up. I was, uh... My father passed away. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that, but it is absolutely a blessing that your mother is alive and healthy and was able to receive you. So that is amazing. Now, I definitely want to go to the Z part because um, I know that you are out here trying to bless our communities with just a lot of knowledge and games. So, you know, Give me some, you know, information on what you hope to do now with your freedom. Well, I got like like I was telling you when we was talking that uh, I'm going to do the motivational speak and I'm going to do the sag fear society against gangs forget everything and recover. 
we must tell the truth and we must shame the devil because it's a facade being told to the children. The children is being manipulated to believe in something that is not true. Even the OGs don't believe in the same methods and codes that they're teaching the children to believe in. They got them out here selling narcotics, destroying the community, killing our people. And at the same time, they breaking bread and making moves with the same individuals they telling us to hate. That ain't real. And anything built on a lie will be destroyed by the truth. And the truth is now. And the truth is that, man, it's time to wake up and smell the coffee because the coffee been brewing a long time. And uh, nobody want to smell it. But they've been smelling it, you know. But the devil was in them. And if the devil was in them, they're going to move accordingly to the devil's plan. And if a God is in you, want to move accordingly to God's plan. But God don't lie, the devil do, you know. So, if you want to be on something real, you're going to be on something real. I'm not here to tell cats not to do what they're doing. You're making a conscious decision. You're making a conscious choice. So when you get locked up, don't complain. Don't cry. Do your time. You know what I mean? But don't get on the radio show and go to acting like you a victim. In reality, you destroyed the fragment of our community. You killed our people. You sold drugs to our people. You lied to your mother. You lied to your baby mother. You didn't take care of your kids. You wasn't a man. Just tell the truth. And if you tell the truth, that's when the healing process begins. But as long as you lie to yourself, you're going to lie to everybody else. And that's what I hear a lot of these individuals doing because they don't want to stand on a solid foundation. They want to stand on a foundation of reading a book. And in reality, they're not looking in the mirror seeing the same thing they're seeing on the radio. Tell the truth. And the truth is, everything that's going on with us and happening to us, we brought it on ourselves. The white man didn't bring it on us. They may have made the guns, but we bought them. They didn't tell us to go shoot another black man over a color, over a bandana that we don't own. We didn't make that bandana. We sending people to college over our misery. They see our blue and red bandanas at a room in the rate. They making billions of dollars over our misery. It takes every year, it's 42,000 per inmate. So, an individual can do a robbery for ten thousand dollars. Get twenty one years and get an Arizona department one plus some million dollars for the ten thousand dollars he took. They're not looking at the biggest the big point. And the big point is we on the stock exchange. We We've on the been stock, on the exchange. stock exchange. Hold on, I'm gonna pause you for one second. All right, Charlie, we took a little bit of a break. What we left off with is Tim Ty kind of giving us a breakdown on what he plans on doing um, for the community now that he's out. And then also just speaking on facts about men and people in general that need to accept accountability for their actions, you know, to basically not per se blame the, the government, the white man, however it's said nowadays, it's always said that, you know, this happened because of the white man or that we are oppressed. What he is saying is that, Nobody told you to pick up a gun. Nobody told you to go commit the robbery. Basically, you knew what the hell you was doing when you was doing what you was doing, so don't try to blame nobody now. If you did something, accept your accountability, serve your time, and move on with your life versus trying to blame somebody else for the actions that you chose to make. Is that correct? Correct. I'm basically saying is when you blame other people for your actions, what you do is you give them the fuel and the ammunition to recruit white supremacists because all they need because they listen to everything that come out of our mouth when we get on these shows and we talk you can believe that they're listening as well and they take these same conversations and they put them in their group and they say you see the white man is to blame for everything and what they do is they fuel the one disenfranchised within their community and these are the same individuals that's picking up the rifles and going to do these mass shootings, but their self-esteem is low because we don't embrace them. They try to come over here with us and we turn them around, call them all type of white boys and crackers and this and that. Do when you they feel that they embrace us? Huh? Do you feel that they embrace us? Of course they embrace us. How could they not? We the biggest thing. Hey, listen, we the biggest thing since Apple Pie. You know what I mean? <laughs> we, 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 they we, don't hey. embrace us. <laughs> look, they do not embrace us. I, look, that's the message. The masses embrace us. 
It's whether we embrace him or not. Of course, you have a portion of America that don't embrace us, but look at the much, look at how many numbers we sell in hip hop. It's more white Correct. people to buy our music than black people. So they embrace our music. Now, we'll say nigga, but we don't want nobody else to say nigga. Even if we stand in our own music, soon as they say nigga, we get mad, and they the same ones put you in the big house, and in the Bentley, you driving around me, and hey, God say hypocrites get it to worse. And if you a hypocrite, don't complain about it. You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm saying. I'm saying if you don't want people to say nigga, don't say nigga yourself. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And nigga and nigga is two different things. We say nigga to take the hate and take the cheat off the nigger. Soon we stop. Soon we start seeing nigger. They stop seeing nigger. Mm. We used no. to call them crackers and honkies and peckerwood. Now they call themselves crackers, honkies, and peckerwood. Guess what? We don't say it no more. Right, right. You know Straight what up. you're saying is correct. But I just, you know, I'm, I'm very excited to see the feedback that we're going to get during this interview because, you know, I'm going to say that what you just said, especially in regards to um, the the nigga term or whatever. Yeah, that's that's 100 percent true. Um, I don't think I think you're going to get a mix. I think it's going to be people that 100 percent agree with you. And I think it's going to be people that want to 100% disagree with you. So I think it'll make way room for good debate and I think it'll make good room for you to spread your message and kind of uh, you know be able to debate back and forth with men and women. If somebody disagree with the truth it's because the devil was making them disagree with the truth. They can say okay he owns some bullshit but guess what you didn't do 1545 you ain't mentally strong as me. You ain't sit in the cell. I sit in the bathroom for 25 years of my life. Mm. You say you're real. Let's see you do that and don't run your mouth. Huh? I did everything. I lived this street life for real. They talking that shit. I'm really about that. You know what I'm saying? But I came, I smell like a rose. They smell, they still smell like a diaper. You know what I'm saying? The truth is the truth. Hey, listen, anything built on a lot won't be, hey, listen, it's the truth. So if they expect it, <laughs> That's what life is about. Life is about debating. But don't debate it because you want to debate it because you got something negative to say. What's real and what's fake? In the end, ask your mother because we disrespect women when we need women. I love women. I love women more than I love men. I'll tell you right now, what man shit? If women left the earth tomorrow, I'll jump off a building and kill myself because I wouldn't be around all these men, huh? Listen, <laughs> without y'all, we is nothing. Without women, we is nothing. We walk around in five hundred dollar pair of shoes to impress the woman. We go buy these big rims to impress the woman, but they don't even put nothing in their kids' belly or put nothing right. in their kids' room because they're too busy trying to impress a woman that don't love them. They'll go to a strip club and throw thousands of dollars, and they got a woman at home, and they mad because she mad about them doing it. Right. Well. Between them and me, I'll make it rain on my woman and still get some. They'll make it rain and not get nothing. So who's the... Uh, okay. So what are your plans? Like now that you're home, you definitely, um, I clearly, we all clearly know that you're following God's plan. So what are your hard, flat out, do you have any like, you know, immediate, short-term, long-term goals set? Well, I got, I got long-term goals. I got my little brother in the hip-hop industry. His name is Finesse the Best. You know what I mean? They can go on YouTube and look him up. Right now, I'm promoting him. He got six videos on YouTube. He just got out. He did, he'd been a free eight years. You know what I'm saying? Okay. He out here, he took, he took a positive uh, step in his life, and he's doing positive. So you can see a person ride around in Rolls Royces. Without committing a felony. Yes. Without committing drugs. I'm going to put the doing... link to uh, Finesse the Best, his YouTube channel. So y'all go check out Finesse the Best. I'm going to put the link up at the end of this video. So everybody that's watching, make sure y'all go check out Finesse the Best. Make sure y'all subscribe and show love because he, um, you know, lived a different life. And now he's chosen a positive route. So you got to support that. You know, he's he's doing well enough to be out there driving Rolls Royce, Rolls, the Roy, Rolls Royces, Lord, tongue twisted, and he's doing it the right way. So make sure y'all support. 
please do. Because he's looking out, he looking out for his big brother. I'm telling you, I ain't missed the meal. I'm eating the finest meat and cheeses. I ain't drugged out. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I, ain't, I ain't addicted to nothing. I'm doing the right thing. I'm standing fast and I'm standing firm. And I'm telling you right now, it's women against men. And if men don't like it, hey, so be it. I'm with the women. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to close out. Is there anything you want to say in final? I'm sure we're going to do this again, you know, because now we locked in. Y'all know how I like to do it. We locked in, so we're going to always do updates, see how you're doing, see if we can get you to come out this way or if we can go out that way. But anything you want to close off and say? No, I want to close out by telling our people, man, I love y'all. You know what I mean? I apologize to our race for my part that I played in the game banging movement. I was moving off of ignorance. I was moving off of being a follower to all the mothers that was harmed with this. I apologize for your loss. I wish I could bring it back, but I can't. But I'm sure your child is resting in heaven. It was an injustice, and Martin Luther King say, an injustice anywhere is an injustice everywhere. And we harmed our people. You know, and we did something to our people that we can't undo. The only way to try to undo it is to make amends. And to make amends is to apologize to our people. And as a man, as a man, I apologize to all the women for my lack of intelligence. I was a child. Hopefully a lot of these brothers that's listening will apologize to their mothers because right now that's who's sending them money, money for their commissary. They in there eating uh, noodles with noodles and zoo zooms and wham whams all for their mother. You know what I mean? So thank your mother. Thank your baby mother. Thank all the women in your life because God knows your homies ain't sending you nothing. They ain't right. even sending you a letter. Only time you see them is when they come back to prison and they ask for a hookup for a female and they just came back a week later. So at the end of the day, let's grow up. And growing up, we must admit the truth. And admit the truth is, it's time for the women. The women has been the fundamental factors on this earth. They have been the <laughs> leaders. We can't claim to be the leaders until we act like it. And until we act like it, let's sit in the back seat and let them drive because they've been driving a long time. And if you don't like what I'm saying, so what? You ain't going to do nothing about it. At the end of the day, God got me. No weapon formed against me. She'll prosper. Amen. So look, okay. Look, Okay, so I was over here gloating while you was talking about women. I was over here, you know, my, my woman power thing. Uh, shout out to Timothy, you know, he um came out here and did his thing all the way from Arizona. We are locked in. I just want to say, um, also totally off topic, but thank you, Joe, for the wrongful conviction shirt. I had to support it. He is um selling these for $25. So if you go to the Wrongful Conviction Group on Facebook, you can find these for sale. Shout out to you, Joe, for sending me my Wrongful Conviction, my monster shirt. It's a song. So on the back is the lyrics to the song. Um, We're going to go ahead and end this. Um, Check it out on YouTube. It'll also be posted on the website from dash inside outcom See y'all later. Hey, what's up, 